Hello, how's everyone today? Hope you're doing good. Um, this is Life with Hope, another episode. Trying out a different location today just to see how it feels. Um, also wanted to just sit down and be comfortable in this chair um, because I have a little bit more of a serious topic to discuss today. And this topic is about death and dying. And yes, I know it's a heavy one. Um, so maybe you want to sit down too. But I guess I just wanted to talk about this subject because it's kind of been coming up a little bit in my life. Not me directly, but like indirectly and in my close circle. Um, just been hearing about it more and more and just how people have these different perspectives about it um and not saying anything is like right or wrong or this or that there's so many different factors that come into play um but some of the deaths that have come up around me as of recently have been the more just out of nowhere um situation just very abrupt and out of the blue and so I kind of wanted to talk about the difference of those types of deaths versus ones that you can almost prepare for plan for in a way whether it be related to like cancer or some rare disease or some illness or just something that is bound to happen but you're kind of going through the motions with a loved one and you're by their side and you're kind of seeing all of it happen so there's one that's that direction of like it's prolonged like it's it's gonna happen and it's gonna happen at some point in time but you're kind of going through the journey of it versus like the okay here we go this is happening like the the or this just happened like out of nowhere out of thin air and so the thing that I have to say about it is that whether it happens this way or it happens this way, I don't really think either one you can necessarily prepare or plan for. Like either way, it's gonna be so hard. It's gonna be so shitty, so terrible, so awful. And it's not gonna make it any better, you know? like whether you do have the one that happens out of nowhere or you do have the one where you're like okay I can, I can i can say my goodbyes or whatever it may be but then when that day comes it still feels like oh shit like they're actually gone now you know so while they're wildly different from each other they're still so extremely heavy in their own ways and i guess i wanted to talk about this subject too not just because it's come up recently but also because it's been about a year now since I found out about my grandpa who had passed and when I found out that information it was around the time where I was actually leaving my company that I was working for and on that day um, we were doing like this company event this social get together and stuff and um, we were out and about by like a beach city and doing this little like harbor cruise or, or something like that and I remember like clocking in for work that day like getting ready at like nine o'clock and I think it was around 11 something when I like got this text from my mom who was reaching out to the rest of my family and she had been like by his side for many months, um, not due to like hospice or not due to like having this ongoing illness or anything. Like she was just there to kind of help him, like you know, get groceries, like things like that to just care for him, like being in his elder years, if you will. Um, and so it was just one of those type of regular afternoons you know or regular mornings where she's just going to check in again and finds out that he's gone like he is gone and we get this text my family and I and I'm with all these co-workers and colleagues and and it's supposed to be a really happy day and a happy time 
but I see this text and I'm like, this is not real. Like this is not happening right now. But the thing that happened in that day and what saved me from just going down this like dark path was because I learned this tool or this trick or whatever it is that you want to call it in um, my class that I took as a student and I'm now teaching now in group classes. There's this tool called Be Here Now. And it's essentially like we're talking about in one of the weeks about going into the past, how a lot of people are stuck in the past. They're just like regretting and and doing this life review and kind of reviewing those two things like good versus bad or the differences of those. And then going into a lot of people who are thinking about the future so much and over planning and overthinking and this and that. And it's just trying to course correct that a little bit and get you back into this present moment called be here now. So you're just kind of checking in and noticing when those moments do come up when you are thinking about the past or you are worrying about the future and finding these different tools to navigate through that and just get yourself back into that present moment. So that is what I want to say saved me that day is having that knowledge of be here now because I saw this text and I had like two choices. I could have just broke down, told somebody close to me and lost it and just been like, I gotta go. Like I, I, I can't be here right now. I have this family emergency. I have to leave. Um, hopefully I'll see you all soon. Or another approach, which is the one that I did end up taking which was there is nothing, absolutely nothing, that was going to change the fact that my grandfather had passed away. Nothing was gonna change that, nothing could fix that, nothing could bring him back, he's gone. And I know that is so harsh and so intense to like hear and say, but that is the truth. Like I couldn't make that go away. And so what I had to keep on teaching myself and coaching myself through this moment was just like be here right now in this moment with these people who a lot of them you also won't see probably ever again because you're leaving this job and sure you have your certain connections and you have certain people who you still meet up with and go get lunch with and stuff but there is that larger aspect where you're like i i really won't realistically see a lot of you again because I'm moving on and I'm starting a new chapter in my life. And so I truly just wanted to enjoy this day and be present with these people who, again, like I, like I just said, I wasn't going to see them most likely. And I just wanted to be there, be there for them and have them be there for me and just enjoy what the rest of the day had to bring, like going out on this boat. It was like, beautiful weather out like a perfect sunny day we went and got lunch that afternoon as well and it was a great day granted I did find out that my grandfather had passed but I did have an enjoyable day with those people and then when the day was over and I was driving home and I got home oh I broke down I broke down I so distraught, so upset, so heartbroken, thinking about so many memories and so many things about my grandfather and all of those like what ifs and oh my gosh and I just wish I would have done that and I, I wish we would have gotten lunch that day and I, I wish I would have reached out sooner and all these things. I did lose it and I just want to say like that is okay. Like that is okay and it is normal and it is acceptable and it is fine to completely grieve and break down and cry and feel all the feels that you're feeling in that moment when you find out that somebody is gone in your life because that is healthy that is healthy to to let it out and to just reminisce or, or cope and and do whatever it is that you need to do, whether it's some, some people need to be alone in their emotions and in their feelings and just kind of 
sit there and like in silence or they need to write down their thoughts or I don't know, maybe it is looking through old photos or whatever it may be. We all have our, our different ways uh, of grieving and um, remembering the person that we love. And some need to rely on others. Some need to reach out to their their friends and their family and, and talk to them and be close with them to kind of be this whole unit because a lot of you are feeling the same things and you're going through that same situation together. So there's going to be so many different variations and stuff, but I just wanted to bring up that story, like my personal story, because it did, it did help me a lot. Yeah, it would help me tremendously because if I didn't know that tool of like being here in the moment, I, I, I would have left. Like I just know it. If that would have happened a few years prior to me like learning this, like I would have just been like, that's the end of my day and I gotta go now and stuff and I, I guess I just I think it's so important to share and to tell all of you who are watching this message because I hope that you're able to maybe utilize this somewhere in your life somewhere down the road because death is inevitable it it is you you cannot avoid it you can't escape it you can't go around it it's gonna happen no matter what and so I'm not saying that you should not cry and not grieve and not feel all the feels but I think the thing that we can improve on when we get this heavy news is we can improve on navigating through it and how we view the situation and how we Oh, I guess I guess grow from it um because like I said it's 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 bound to happen and so finding these different ways and these different tools of just being okay with not being okay and just being in the present moment and just enjoy where your life is now because that's another thing like when I mentioned the regretting the past and all that I know many, many people who just go back to oh, when so-and-so was here. When so-and-so was here, I'd feel this or things would be so much better or my life would be this way or my life would be that way. But it's like, I think a lot of us forget the ones who are still here the ones who are right next to you, right in your circle, right in front of your face. Some people forget that. Some forget that sure, the your half of your heart is gone now. I can I'm not going to undermine that with whether it is your your spouse or a mother or father or brother or sister, or someone just so incredibly close to you. I'm never going to undermine that that's going to be one of the hardest losses or some of the hardest losses in a lot of our lives. Like that is, that is so true. And I just, I just know it. I just know how heavy all those losses are going to be. And I, I don't, again, not going to be prepared, not going to be ready. Don't ever want it to happen at any time soon. Hope, I wish everybody lived forever. Oh my gosh. But it's just trying to, how can I put it, of finding ways to still enjoy your life. Like just because this person is gone, they don't want that for you. You know it, I know it. They don't want you to just be looking back at all these photos, looking back at all these conversations you had and just wishing they were still here. They want you to live. They want you to live your life and to keep living and to keep enjoying all the moments that you can possibly take in because that's what you have left. And I feel that's the honor that you're doing them is enjoying it and being happy and being excited and just loving life like 
that doesn't make you a bad person and you shouldn't feel guilty about that either. Like you shouldn't be guilty to smile and to laugh and to enjoy everyone who is around you right now because somebody is not there anymore. You know that they want this for you. So that's, that's my message for this episode of Life With Hope. I know it's heavy and it's a little dark and I apologize if this was a lot for some of you, but the other part of me doesn't apologize because I also feel a lot of us need to hear this information and we don't really talk about it much. Um, we don't really normalize it or make it a thing, but I wanted to make it a thing today because I'm honoring my grandfather who is passed and has been gone for a year now. And I, I still, and again, I don't want to regret or, I do, I do wish that I would have texted him or called him sooner to go get lunch um, and have a little bit more time with him in those last few years. And so, if I could spread another message is if you do have some of those people in your life, some of your, the elderly folks who are getting up there in age, go, go do that. Go, if you can't, if they're too far away and you can't go visit them and you can't see them in person, call them, just call them, text them, FaceTime them, whatever you can do and just let them know how much you love them and how much you miss them and how much you appreciate them because it's gonna, it's really gonna go a long way and it's gonna make you feel great. It's gonna make them feel great. And so that's my story, guys. That's what I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this helps you. I hope it comes in handy at some point in time. But again, I appreciate you listening. Um, if there's any like feedback, any comments, anything that you have, please let me know. Um, and I'll see you next time. All right. You guys have a good night. Thanks. Bye-bye.